There's no doubting that your feelings towards this game are interesting. There are just certain opinions you have that we don't fully understand. We were hoping that you could explain them in detail. Well, uh, the gameplay has been changed up, it features an entirely new environment, and the controls have been updated to work with the new gameplay. It even has voice acting. Um, with all due respect, those weren't the opinions we were looking for, Mr. Quinn. Huh. I don't remember the game opening like this. So, Five Nights at Freddy's, what more can I really say? I've expressed many times in the past that I am extremely passionate about this franchise. And yeah, I know it's cringe to say that I'm very passionate about FNAF, but I do genuinely enjoy the series, and I always keep up to date with the franchise. Whether that be regarding new games, new books, new lore details, and of course, the upcoming movie starring Shaggy from Scooby-Doo as William Afton. No, it's really me, Scoob. I'm the Shag behind the slaughter. Now, with how many games the franchise has produced, not all of them are going to be bangers. Of course, there was Security Breach, which had the potential to be amazing, but it failed and just ended up being a broken mess that I just fucking hate. This game blows! And there was FNAF World, which was just... weird, to be honest. And believe it or not, but FNAF 3 was originally not that well liked when it was released, with people mainly not being satisfied with the jump scares. I love you. But over time, people seem to have grown a liking to this game, and even consider it to be the best within the entire series. Okay, I'm editing Zach here, and um, apparently people don't like FNAF 2, which like... Uh huh? Like, I'm all for having opinions, but like, since when do we start hating FNAF 2? I thought that was the best game in the series. I guess people can have their opinions. Back to the video. But a game that almost everyone seems to hate within the series has to be Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Released in October 2016, the game attempted to revamp the entire series with a new location, new characters, new gameplay mechanics, a much more detailed story, and even voice acting. It seems that you had some trouble with the keypad. I see what you were trying to type, and I will auto-correct it for you. One moment. Everyone was so excited for this game, since it seemed like a breath of fresh air for the series. But when the game was eventually released, it received... mixed to negative reviews. People don't really hate the game per se, but they do find it to be the weakest out of the entire series. Most of the complaints come from how the game just isn't as scary or as fun as the original games, and is just too different. Now obviously, people are entitled to their own opinions, but I honestly never really understood the complaints behind this game. I wouldn't say it's the best game in the series, but at the same time, it's nowhere near the worst. If anything, I actually really enjoy the game. I think it changes things up in a way where it's not too different from the older games, yet it feels like an evolution in all the right ways. And everything that's been added to this game makes it so much more enjoyable than the previous games. So in today's video, I want to go over the entire game and explain why I personally believe this game is a bit overhated. So with all that said, let's go and dissect this game. The show will begin momentarily. Everyone, please stay in your seats. So in this game, we are the new mechanic at Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental, where each night we have to check up on the animatronics. These animatronics being Circus Baby, Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, and Ballora. You also crawl around some vents, stand in a lift, and listen to the game's incredible dialogue. So, funny story, a dead body was found in this vent once. Okay, so, not that funny, but it's a story. Alright, so from that description, I know the game doesn't really sound amazing, but trust me bro, this game is really good, but it does have its flaws, which I will get into, I promise. First of all, one thing you guys have probably noticed is that the gameplay is very different when compared to the other games. Instead of just sitting in an office or crawling around a bedroom, we have a lot more freedom here. Well, I say freedom in a very loose term, since I wouldn't say this is an open world game like Security Breach, 
but rather a very limited free roaming game. Even calling this game a free roam is a bit of a stretch, since this game is still technically a point and click game. So all the movements here are technically just illusions created in the game engine. If you're wondering why the game is like this, most of the FNAF games are made in a program called Click Team Fusion, which is a really good software for point and click games, but you couldn't really make a game like The Last of Us in this engine. I do appreciate Scott trying to push the software with what I can do by creating the sense of free roam, but if he really wanted to go all out, he should have moved to a program like Unity or Game Maker. But putting aside the limitations, I do genuinely find a lot of enjoyment within the gameplay. Each night brings a new challenge to the player, and you never know what's going to happen next. While I do love the first few games, the gameplay did get sort of repetitive after a while, since most of the time you're just sitting in an office fending off animatronics. Only difference is that the gameplay gets more and more intense as you progress forward. But I like how every night is different here, as it keeps the players on their toes, always wondering what's going to happen next. I also like how the game doesn't follow a strict 12 to 6 am time limit. Instead, you only progress forward when you complete all your tasks. Sort of like what Scott did with FNAF 6, but with Sister Location, all the different gameplay modes and the situations you're put into adds this level of fear and urgency that I just love. Like the part where you're stuck in a springlock suit and you have to constantly wind the springlocks back before they impale you, while there are also these mini arenas crawling into your suits. Or when you're walking through Ballora's gallery and you have to walk really slowly and listen to her music, because the louder her music gets, the closer she is to killing you. Almost every night you play through is both really intense, yet so much fun. We even get to return to seeing an office and fending off the animatronics, who have formed into this entity called Ennard. Although, if I have to critique the gameplay, there is a lot of just standing around, slightly moving forward, and listening to the characters talk for ages. And you can skip a lot of these sections, so when you have to redo them, it can get really boring and tedious. Like, how many times do we have to crawl through these vents? We get it, Scott. You are able to add vent crawling in FNAF. We're so proud of you, Scott. Wait a second. What kind of job has you crawl through vent shafts to get to different rooms? I've worked factory jobs and retail jobs, and I never had to crawl through vents. Imagine applying for a job, and you see that you constantly have to crawl through these small vent shafts. How would that even play out? Hey there, new employee. Now I know you're probably wondering how this job works. But don't worry, I'll explain everything. But first things first, are you okay with crawling through these tiny vent shafts to get to a different room? Now I know that isn't ideal, and you could easily just walk through the hallway, but come on. All in all, the gameplay is pretty good. I can see why some people may not be a big fan of it, but personally, I really enjoy it. You can definitely tell that Scott wants to try something new here, and while it may not have been amazing, it is a breath of fresh air in terms of how the game presents itself. Another element that's been changed up here is the graphics. Instead of having an old-timey industrial style like the past games, the graphics in this game have a sort of sci-fi futuristic style. Most people seem to be somewhat split when it comes to the game's design. One side saying how it doesn't look scary, and the other side saying how it's the best looking game in the entire series. Personally, I'm sort of in the middle ground. I do really love the whole futuristic slash sci-fi style this game has. It really helps make this game stand out amongst the rest, and it's something I wish we saw more within the series. Then there are the designs of the new animatronics, which are... Eh, they're alright, I guess. They definitely look really clean and well designed, and I love the sort of metallic chrome texture on them. But my main issue is they aren't really scary. I brought this up in my security breach video, but with the old FNAF games, the designs are a perfect blend of looking kid friendly while also having this scary factor to them. Take Springtrap for example. His design is honestly one of the best horror designs in all of gaming, as it perfectly combines a corpse into an animatronic costume. But with the animatronics in this game, they never really scared me to be honest. The only animatronic who looks somewhat scary is Funtime Freddy. I don't even know why he looks scary to me, but the task where you have to reset the power and you can see Freddy just towering over you in the dark with the lights flashing is just so terrifying. Also, this is sort of an offhand comment, but I love that when you're at home watching TV, Scott didn't even bother modeling popcorn and just used some PNG he found on the internet. Oh boy, I sure can't wait to eat this bowl of popcorn. That is totally real, by the way. Another element that this location brought to the series was voice acting. Previously, we had Scott just talking to a mic, either doing a generic white man voice or a radically cool and hip surfer phone dude in FNAF 3. But in this game, 
we have an entire cast voicing different characters and animatronics. And honestly, the voice acting is really good. Gone are the days of Scott Cawthon talking on the phone about the Bite of 87, and now we have a hand unit talking about exotic butters. Honestly though, the voice acting does really add to the game. It's nice that the animatronics finally have voices, and sort of a personality. It helps us kind of identify with them in a way. They don't just feel like scary robots who go, ah. But we can hear them talk about how they feel, and sort of give us some clues on who they are as characters. Like for example, we hear Ballora vaguely sing about someone she knows hiding away from her, and all she sees is this empty tomb. Why? I wonder who this is referring to. But speaking of the game's story, it's time to talk about the weirdest and strangest part of FNAF, and that is its confusing storyline. Now, I could stay here for hours talking about the entire lore to the series, but instead, I'll only go over the story here and talk about why I love it so much. Plus, talking about the entire storyline will take ages and I really don't have the energy for that. So in this game, we play as Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, and the protagonist of almost every game. Well, except for FNAF 2, and maybe 4, and Security Breach, and a few others. Okay, so it's not really confirmed if he's protagonist in most of the games, but stick with me here. Michael has been sent down by William to free the soul of his sister Elizabeth, who basically got killed by the baby animatronic because William is just a shit father who doesn't know how to take care of his own daughter. But since Michael and William apparently look similar to each other, the animatronics mistake Michael for William. And to make a really, really long story short, William basically murdered a bunch of kids and stuffed their dead bodies into the animatronics. So you can imagine they're kind of pissed off at him. Eventually they realize that Michael isn't William, but they still kill him anyway and use his empty body as a suit to live in the real world. But since Michael is, well, a human, and dead bodies tend to rot over time, he becomes this purple corpse, so the animatronics just abandon him. But for some reason he doesn't die, since Baby says, you won't die, over and over again. I, I, I guess Michael has that dog in him or something. So then Michael ends up becoming this purple fella, and the game ends with him saying how he will find his father and make things right. There is only one thing left for me to do now. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. Now, despite how somewhat simple the story sounds, when this game was released, people really mistook the story. The main thing that really confused people at the time was the whole Mike Trap, Will Trap thing. So basically, people believed that Michael was the purple guy, which means that he would have to be Spring Trap, and the whole purple murdering man thingy. While this theory sounds really bizarre, back then it sort of made sense. At the end of Sister Location, Michael turns into this purple corpse thingy, and the ending cutscene shows him speaking to William with this robotic voice, and then it shows Springtrap. While it sort of makes sense why people will come up with this theory, it has many flaws. Like, why would Michael be the one who murders all these kids, when it's clear that he's on this quest to figure out the mystery behind Freddy Fazbear's, and to also put an end to all the pain and suffering William has caused? And it's sort of been established in the games and books that William Afton is the killer, and he is the one who possesses Springtrap. It is confusing how Michael turns purple at the end of this game, and how in the previous games, William is presented as this purple figure, but I guess Scott just really loves the color purple. So while the story is pretty messy here, in my opinion, it's definitely the most interesting and the most complex the series has ever gotten in terms of telling its story. I love how during the beginning of each night, we can hear Elizabeth's voice in the background begging William to let her play with the baby animatronic. It sort of feels like Michael is getting these flashbacks to when his sister was alive and all the pain he has been through. Plus, the story feels a lot more personal here. Like, this is a story about a man who is facing his past and trying to rescue his dead sister, while also fixing the damage that was caused by his father. In conclusion, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location is a flawed, but fun game. 
It does have a lot of issues that I can't really ignore, and I can see why some people may not like this game, but personally, I can't bring myself to hate it. It has many elements that makes for a fun and intense gameplay experience, and I personally enjoyed a lot of the changes here. While I do wish that the gameplay wasn't stuck to the limitations of Click Team, and that the atmosphere was a bit more scary, it is still a really good entry to the series, and I would highly recommend you all check out this game when you can. Anyway, thank you all for watching, make sure to check out my socials and subscribe to the channel, and I shall see you guys in the next one.